Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Valsa Williams with the Midday News. The headlines. India is rising as a force in the world at every level in economy, defense, social and cultural sectors, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Lok Sabha adjourned for the day and Rajya Sabha till 2 p.m. following uproar over various issues. Minister for Commerce and Industry Suresh Prabhu says India's aviation sector is the fastest growing in the world. Assam government approves debt relief scheme for the farmers of the state. Embattled Lika Tycoon Vijay Mallya will face bankruptcy proceedings in the UK High Court next year. And in cricket, India lose second test against Australia at Perth by 146 runs. India is rising as a force in the world at every level including in economy, defense, social and cultural sectors. The prime minister said this while speaking at a function on the theme surging India in Mumbai. Mr Modi said साथियों सर्जिंग इंडिया ये दो शब्द 130 करोड़ भारतीयों की भावनाओं का प्रगतिकरण है भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था हो भारत की प्रतिभा हो भारत की सामाजिक व्यवस्था हो भारत के सांस्कृतिक मूल्य हो या फिर भारत की सामरिक ताकत हर स्तर पर भारत की पहचान और मजबूत हो रही है The Prime Minister urged the media to attain a new height to create an identity for itself. भारत विश्व में एक ताकत के रूप में उभरे इसके लिए कई क्षेत्रों में हमें वैश्विक ऊंचाई को प्राप्त करना होता है चाहे साइंस हो टेक्नोलॉजी हो इनोवेशन हो स्पोर्ट्स हो उसी प्रकार दुनिया में भारत की आवाज बुलंद करने के लिए हमारा मीडिया भी वैश्विक पहुंच बनाए वैश्विक पहचान बनाए ये समय की मांग है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड फोर इयर्स बैक नो बडी थॉट दैट इंडिया वुड क्रिएट अ रिकॉर्ड ऑफ लॉन्चिंग अ हंड्रेड सैटेलाइट इन वन गो एंड नाउ इंडिया इज इवन वर्किंग टूवर्ड्स गगन यान Mr Modi said till 2014 only 55% houses in the country had a gas connection now the government is working towards finding permanent solutions and ending those practices that have held back progress for decades the prime minister said in the past when companies were unable to repay loans nothing used to happen to them and their owners but now this has ended alag alag wajah se jab ye companies bimar padti thi घाटे में चली जाती थी बैंकों का पैसा नहीं लौटा पाती थी तो इन कंपनियों को और इन कंपनियों के मालिकों को कुछ नहीं होता था क्योंकि इन कंपनियों को एक खास तरह का सुरक्षा कवच मिला हुआ था एक ऐसा सुरक्षा कवच जिसमें कुछ खास लोगों कुछ खास परिवार के निर्देश चलते थे लेकिन 2016 में इन सोलवेंसी एंड बैंक कोड बनाकर मैंने इस सुरक्षा चक्र को तोड़ दिया है The Prime Minister is on a day long visit to Maharashtra today where he will launch various development projects. He will lay the foundation stone for two important metro corridors at a public meeting in Kalyan. PM Modi will also unveil the low cost housing project to build about 1 lakh affordable houses under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana before proceeding to address a public meeting. After this event he would proceed to Pune for laying the foundation stone for the Pune Metro Phase 3 project. Our correspondent has more on this. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will lay the foundation stone of line 3 of Pune Metro running in between IIT hub Chandwadi and Shivaji Nagar today. This is the longest and fully elevated line of Pune Metro with the length of 23 kilometers and connecting 23 stations. Work on line 1 and line 2 of Pune Metro is already in progress. Line 1 will connect nearby industrial town in Prichinchwad to the main bus stand of Pune Swargate. This is the only line passing through crowded old city of Pune and its elevated track up to Shivaji Nagar will go underground. For five kilometers from Shivaji Nagar to Kargi, Nitin Kerkar, for AIR News, Pune. The Prime Minister also released Timeless Lakshman, a book on R K Lakshman's cartoons in digital format in Mumbai. 
Proceedings in both houses of parliament were again disrupted over several issues, including the Rafale aircraft deal. The Lok Sabha was adjourned for the day and the Rajya Sabha till 2 p.m. The Lok Sabha witnessed acrimonious scenes on Rafale with opposition and treasury bench members engaging in raising slogans. Congress leader Malikarjun Kharge insisted on a joint parliamentary committee probe into the Rafale deal, saying the pricing of the aircraft should be discussed thoroughly. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Narendra Singh Tomar responded that the Supreme Court has already settled the issue. He, however, maintained that the government is ready for a detailed discussion on the matter. As chaotic scenes continued, Speaker Sumitra Mahajan adjourned the House till tomorrow. In the Rajya Sabha, the opposition forced an adjournment till 2 p.m. due to uproar over Rafal and other issues. Leader of opposition, Ghulam Nabi Azad, raised the Rafal issue, saying his party has given a privileged notice against the government for misleading both Parliament and the Supreme Court on the matter. Responding to this, Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu said the notice is under his consideration as it pertains to a serious matter. Mr. Azad was countered by Minister of State for Parliamentary Affairs, Vijay Goyal, asserting that the government is willing to hold discussion on all matters, including Rafal. He accused the opposition of running away from discussion. Amidst heated exchange between the Treasury bench and opposition members, Mr. Naidu adjourned the House. Union Agriculture Minister Radha Mohan Singh has said the centre will help states tide over distress situations for farmers through the market intervention scheme. Amidst uproarious scenes in the Lok Sabha during question hour, a few members raised concern over the plight of onion and potato farmers. The minister in his reply said the market intervention scheme is already in place for certain agricultural commodities. Senior BJP leader and Home Minister Rajnath Singh has said the party has resolved to gear up for general elections next year. He was speaking at the BJP Parliamentary Party meeting in New Delhi this morning. Later addressing the media, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Narendra Singh Tomar said, उसका विवरण रखा गया और आने वाले कल में जो विधायी कार्य लोकसभा और राज्यसभा में संपन्न होना है उस बारे में भी चर्चा की गई सभी सांसदगण अपनी उपस्थिति सुनिश्चित करें इस बात का भी आग्रह इस बैठक में किया गया Quoting Rajnath Singh, Mr. Tomer said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi is the most popular leader and BJP is far ahead of any other political outfit in the country this is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Minister for Commerce and Industry Suresh Prabhu has said that India considers Turkey as a close friend and an important business partner and both the nations can benefit from each other. He was addressing the India-Turkey Business Forum in New Delhi today. Mr. Prabhu said trade relations between the two countries must be sustainable and both should export and import goods from each other. The minister said there is huge potential for Turkish companies in India, particularly in agriculture, construction and other sectors. Mr. Prabhu, who is also Minister for Civil Aviation, said the aviation sector in India is growing at 20% and it is the fastest growing aviation sector anywhere in the world. The government is creating necessary infrastructure and in the next 10 years, 100 more airports will be built with an investment of $65 billion. He said the government is working on a strategy to manufacture aeroplanes in India. Mr. Prabhu said with economic reforms, India will become a $5 trillion economy in 7 to 8 years. We are also looking at potential of India in which in the next few years time when I become power minister of commerce and industry, I said we get prepare a blueprint for a $5 trillion economy. I am happy to say that India will be $5 trillion in a matter of stay one eight years time and already prepared a complete roadmap for it. The Assam government has approved debt relief scheme for the farmers of the state. The decision was taken in a cabinet meeting held in Guwahati yesterday, headed by Chief Minister Sarbananda Sonowal. The state cabinet decided to waive 25% of loan amount to the farmers. However, the maximum relief per farmer would be capped at 25,000 rupees. 
The cabinet also decided that a farmer could avail a Kisan credit card KCC loan at 0% interest. The cabinet also approved a farmer's incentive scheme under which 10,000 rupees would be given to farmers having bad debts for taking loan under KCC. Congress President Rahul Gandhi today demanded that the government should waive loans of farmers across the country. Talking to reporters outside Parliament, Mr. Gandhi said Congress governments in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh have already waived farmers' loans. He also reiterated his demand for a JPC probe into the Rafale aircraft deal. News just in, Rajya Sabha has been adjourned for the day amid uproar by the opposition. Embattled liquor tycoon Vijay Malia will face bankruptcy proceedings in the UK High Court next year. A consortium of Indian banks in their attempt to recoup unpaid debt worth over £1 billion has filed the case. TLT LLP, a UK-based law firm which had won a landmark case for the 13 banks led by State Bank of India earlier this year, confirmed that their bankruptcy petition against the 62-year-old businessman has been transferred to the insolvency list in London's High Court of Justice. Paul Gare, partner at TLT, said that the hearing is expected to take place from March. In a ruling in May, a UK High Court judge had refused to overturn a worldwide order freezing Malia's assets. The court also upheld an Indian court's ruling that the consortium of 13 Indian banks were entitled to recover funds. In Sri Lanka, President Majibala Sirisena has told his MPs not to join the government of Ranil Vikramasinghe. The president is reported to have conveyed this to a group of 21 MPs of Sri Lanka Freedom Party, SLFP, in a meeting today. His views assume significance as some of the SLFP MPs had expressed desire to join the new government of Mr. Vikramasinghe, who was sworn in again on Sunday. These 21 MPs were part of the unity government till October the 26th, but had parted ways to join the government of Mahinda Rajapaksa. The cabinet is being finalized and likely to be sworn in in the coming days. President Sirisena decided to reinstate Mr. Vikramasinghe, ending the weeks-long crisis, but made it clear that he is personally against the appointment and did it out of respect for parliamentary traditions and democracy. Meanwhile, Parliament is likely to debate a motion calling for the abolition of executive presidency when it meets later today. The countdown for the launch of India's communication satellite GSAT-7A will begin today at the Satish Dhawan Space Centre in Sriharikota, Andhra Pradesh. The satellite will be launched on board GSLV F-11 at 4.10 p.m. tomorrow. While GSLV F-11 will inject the satellite into a geosynchronous transfer orbit, it will be placed in its final geostationary orbit using the onboard propulsion system. GSAT-7A, built by ISRO, will provide communication capability to users in KU band over the Indian region. The satellite will have a mission life of eight years. In Uttar Pradesh, winter session of the State Assembly started today. On the first day of the session, both houses were adjourned after offering condolences. Members of the Assembly paid homage to the former Chief Minister of the State, late Narayan Dattivari, former Central Minister Leta Anand Kumar and member of the Legislative Assembly late Ram Kumar Verma who passed away recently. In cricket, Australia defeated India by 146 runs in the second test at Perth today. It has now levelled the four-match series 1-1. The hosts bundled out India for 140 runs in 56 overs in their second innings on the fifth and final day. Starting from the overnight score of 112 for 5, India lost their last five wickets for 28 runs and it was all over within 65 minutes of play. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. India is rising as a force in the world at every level, in economy, defence, social and cultural sectors, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Both Houses of Parliament adjourned for the day. Minister for Commerce and Industry Suresh Prabhu says India's aviation sector is the fastest growing in the world. Assam government approves debt relief scheme for farmers of the state. Embattled liquor tycoon Vijay Malia will face bankruptcy proceedings in the UK High Court next year. 
And in cricket, India lose second test against Australia at Perth by 146 runs. And with that, we end the midday news.